That's good. Then we can get started. And I suggest to start lying down on the backs today. Just being comfortable for a moment. Let the arms release outward. You can choose what to do with your feet, with your knees, your legs in total. And maybe just allowing yourself to be comfortable in any way that feels right for yourself. You could from there take a deeper breath in and allowing a very soft sigh out of the mouth. Arriving in this moment, which is my theme for this week, an invitation to the present moment as it is. We will bring awareness to the breath a fair bit and simply to allow ourselves to return to the moment. We're using the breath as our tool and we often do that in yoga practice. So um, in some lineages, we're using your jaya technique all the way through the practice. I would love you to uh, practice the Ujjayi breathing for a little bit while you're lying there. The most comfortable position to breathe in and out deeply and to release on the inhalation your diaphragm down towards the abdomen and then on the exhalation as it naturally happens the diaphragm pulls back up and assists the out breath. And to make that an Ujjayi breath, um, add a very soft constriction in the back of the throat at the area around the glottis that can narrow down the air passage. And with that, we're creating some oceanic sound. It's not quite snoring. <laughs> so if you do fall asleep, uh, that's okay. <laughs> But for now, I would simply love you to listen to the sound that your breath is making and allowing the breath to move deep down into the abdomen and letting that rise. And even on the out-breath, lightly engaging uh, Mula Bandha or lower abdomen towards tailbone and releasing the breath out this way. You can't hear the hissing sound if you have trouble creating this. You could imagine that when we do this out of the mouth, we're doing that to fog up glasses or a mirror to wipe it down. So as we breathe out, we're then automatically narrowing the air passage. So for you to work with this breath, there is the hissing sound. And another invitation from there, once this breath is established, is to find a different length for your breathing. As you notice how long does it take you to exhale currently, maybe using a count. And then allowing the inhalation to be half the length and the exhalation then naturally stays the same. So we've got a ratio of one to two. Exhalation, double the length as the in-breath. Now you might notice that the in-breath feels quite short and you might take more air in on the inhalation and really slowly releasing the exhalation. It's free to extend your count if that feels comfortable. We do not want to stress our breathing. It would only be an expansion. No strain, no stress in the breath. Finding an even in and out breath. That is balanced in the range of one to two.
staying uh, with the ratio and the Ojai technique for a few more rounds. When you have next completed an exhalation, let that breathing technique go and allow the body to remain relaxed. Noticing any potential change that might have been created. And then let your arms move a bit further away from the body, out just below shoulder height, stepping your feet if they aren't yet cut comfortably down onto the floor. You might readjust the positioning of your back. And very simply, just a small movement for now, the knees gently swaying from side to side, and with that you could notice a rocking over the pelvis, and allowing these knees to swing out further towards the sides, unless there's any strain or stress around your hips, your back. Widening the movement, keeping your shoulders grounded and observing how the movement starts to ripple up the spine. I would suggest if that's possible for you to leave your knees towards the left hand side, to leave your shoulders on the ground and if you would like to, if the head stays down as well, but you could roll it over to one side that appears to be the most appealing. You might then slide the top knee on top of the other. That would be a deepening change in your twist, so only do so if that feels right for you keeping both shoulders on the ground. If you feel a little more is still in there, draw the knees a bit closer up towards the chest. This may or may not be okay for your body. The knees don't have to touch or any other alignment points. Just bringing some space in. And then let the knees slide back further down again bringing your knees one after the other and the head back into the center. And now letting your knees roll over towards the right hand side. Again, the feet are still a little bit apart as you allow the shoulders to remain grounded. Your choice again to turn the head to one side. The rules around which side the head might turn and if you feel you want to do a little bit more, sliding the top knee on top of the bottom knee, increasing into your twist into the space we're creating in the body. And if this feels all right, you might draw the knees a bit closer up towards your chest. Allow yourself to breathe with ease. And let the legs slide a bit downwards again, more relaxed Stay lifting one knee after the other and letting the head roll into the center. Let us give both knees a good squeeze in towards the chest. You can hold onto your hands or the wrist and rock a little bit from side to side. The stimulation of the back. Now with this, keep your right knee in towards the chest 
and step your left foot down onto the ground. If you like to momentarily lengthen the left leg out, this might be a lovely extension through the quads, the hip flexors, bringing a flexion in that case into the left foot and keeping a good hug of the right knee to the chest. With the next out of us, would you try and touch your nose towards the knee? And then releasing the upper body back down. If your left leg is extended, please set the foot again onto the ground. Take your ankle and place that on top of the left thigh. You can use your right hand just to guide your knee a little bit further away from you a good time to check into this moment and to acknowledge how you are feeling. If you're feeling reasonably comfortable here, especially around your knees, you could lift your left foot off the floor, reach through between the legs and around, taking a hold here, either off the back of the thigh or even around the shin, which is a lot closer. So it's depending on what do you want. A guidance of your right elbow to open the knee further or a deeper hug of the legs. And just feeling in now, right or wrong, just notice where you're at. Bring back a light flexion into the right foot. So aligning and strengthening through the joints. And keep a good hug if you did lift the foot. Maybe a light chin tuck here to lengthen back through the back of the neck. Deep breath in. And as you have a sigh out, release your leg. The left foot comes back to the ground, the arms relaxing. And we're stepping the right foot down onto the mat. Just noticing. The difference between the two sides now, left and right. Now bring your left knee into the chest and maybe interlace the fingers to hug the knee in. And if it feels good, extend your right leg out long. If you do to create this space, please point your toes up towards the ceiling, kind of as if you are standing on the right foot. Keeping your knee hugged in, breathing in. And on the exhalation, maybe the nose tries to touch the knee. Then lie gently back down onto your back. While we keep the knee hugged in. We will set the right foot back down onto the ground. We'll take the ankle and guide it across using the left hand just to move your knee gently away from you and noticing how this feels. If this feels good, slide the left hand through between the legs, lift the right foot, maybe holding on to the back of the thigh. And that would give you the opportunity of using your left elbow to keep your knee out to the side. Or you could wrap your hands around the shin and hug the legs in much deeper. Please notice that these sides could be entirely different in how far you feel you want to go or what you experience in your body to be the best stretch. Aligning again the back of the neck with a subtle chin tuck so the hip doesn't fall back and keep hugging your legs in. To release, step your right foot back down onto the mat, then the left foot and let your arms fall out again. You could try and slide your shoulder blades a little bit under, broadening a bit more on the front of your collarbones, and then keeping that alignment, but turning your arms inwards so the palms are now touching the mat. Your feet are at hip distance. I will just step mine a tiny bit closer towards the buttocks. 
The toes are pointing forward, the knees are also hip distance apart, and as you inhaling now, tilt your pelvis to flatten out your spine. And then the light squeeze into the buttocks muscles as you're rolling your spine off the ground, coming into the bridge. And this bridge will draw our tailbone towards the backs of the knees, getting a further extension through the quads, maybe through the hip flexors as well. Holding your shoulder blades under as you inhale again. And with the exhalation now rolling down gently onto your back. Let us create a movement from here on the inhale, tilt and lift back into the bridge. On the exhale, rolling down again, slowly touching the vertebras to the floor. And this is going, inhale, tilt and lift. Watch your knees, keep them at hip distance whether you're lifting or you're lowering on the out-breath. Your choice from here would be to also bring in the arms as you inhaling, lifting the hips, the arms extending over the head. And on the out-breath, as the spine rolls down, the arms are gently releasing back down by the sides. On the inhale, tilt and lift. On the exhale, roll down and release the arms. Please go for another three rounds. It's your pace, your practice. You move in this moment as the in or the out breath goes, the body is moving. We completed these movements. I'd ask you to let the arms open out again. The palms turn up towards the ceiling. And you would feel in and just notice what has the spinal movement created for you. No right, no wrong. We'll take the feet off the ground with the knees gently towards the chest. And we will allow the knees once more to roll over to the right hand side. And you might notice that this way could be much deeper. If you don't like that, slide the feet and legs a little bit further down towards the mat. And your gaze could turn again to one side. Keeping your knees potentially as close up as is comfortable for you. Taking a deep inhale. Long, slow exhalation, maybe back to half um, in breath, double out breath. And one more breath like that. Letting your knees lift again, your head come to the center and we're bringing the knees on the next out breath over to the left. Keep your shoulders on the ground. The knees as far down as they need to be and as high up as is possible for you. Maybe turning the gaze again. And while we have two breaths, the ratio could be one to two. It could also be another Ujjayi technique. Whenever you have completed the breaths, instead of rolling onto your back again, let the right arm join the left. Place the right hand down onto the floor. Draw your knees in a little bit closer towards the chest so you're nice and comfortable. Um, going with comfort, ease, but also confidence 
into the next movement. As you press down into your hands, finding your way up onto all fours. So we're spreading our hands out onto the mat whenever you're ready. The knees as usual are underneath the hips for this alignment. Spreading out through your fingers. Find the length in the spine with a reach forward through the crown of the head. And we will extend our right leg out along the floor, just extending the leg backwards, keeping space in between the shoulder blades. Inhale. And on the exhale, releasing your knee back down to the ground. So that's very simple. We'll do the same on the left leg, extending the leg out along the floor, trying to aim for even weight bearing in the arms and the space in the upper back. And we will bring the left knee back down. Let your hands step a little bit further forward or slide them there. Round through your spine and lean into a kneeling plank. Draw your tailbone down in the direction of the backs of the knees. And when you're exhaling, the elbows are brushing along the sides as you lower down onto the mat. You can even place your forehead down, keeping the hands underneath the shoulders and the tops of the feet flat on the floor. With an inhale, wave up lightly, baby cobra. With the out-breaths, releasing the forehead back down. Do that again, inhaling, baby cobra, mini waves through the back, and on the exhale, lower again. One more time, inhale, wave up, pause. You can use your hands here, but ground through your feet, open through the sternum, breathe in one more time. And as you're exhaling, use your hands in the floor, tuck your toes under and stretch your hips up and back. Ideally, you haven't moved your hands, so there's a lot of room for extension to reach your hips further up and back as you would in a full downward facing dog. With the next inhale now, coming back up onto all fours, and you can choose whether you step your hands in or your knees and finding your strong stance again on all fours. We will extend back through the right leg. This time the foot is lifting off the ground as we inhale. On the exhale, draw your knee and nose together underneath. While you're inhaling, extend the leg out and your spine. And on the out breath, curling in again. Let's do that one more time. On the inhale, extending the leg, your back. And on the out breath, throw your in and maybe help or simply step the foot forward between your hands. Take both hands on the inside of this foot and swing the left foot behind you. On an in-breath, rise up with the right arm leading. You can place your forearm onto the thigh or you can point your fingertips down in the direction of the toes. So if your arm is on the inside of the knee, use it as a guidance. You might look up towards your hand. You could also take a swing back of the arm as you inhale and extend this kneeling side angle pose with the arm reaching over the head. If your neck allows you, you might look up towards your fingertips. I still keep a light chin tuck to engage through the neck. Let's release the left hand down, bring the left foot back into alignment and take an inhale to lift the right arm. You might again lift your gaze up. This is a simple twist but aligning the hips, I just noticed my right hip was going comfortably out to the side, reining that back in. Let your arms swing back from here, outside edge of the foot. Slide the knee back and place your hands a little bit further forward. On the inhale, round your spine now into a kneeling plank, tailbone towards the backs of your knees. 
on the out breaths, elbows close and lower again towards the mat. Top self the feet on the ground, inhale, wave it up. Maybe the cobra is rising a bit further on the out breaths, releasing that again. Inhaling, waving up. Exhaling, releasing. One more, inhale, waving up. And if you like, you can slide the hands further forward, holding in a deeper extension. Please do take good care of your back foremost. Keep your hips up on the ground, the shoulders relaxed, the elbows pointing by your sides. On the next elbow, let the elbows spread. Lower the forehead down, slide the hands back under the shoulders. Inhale as you come onto all fours. And this is where we're going to stay. Realigning your knees, realigning your hands and spreading out through the fingers. I've got a long spine there. On the inhale now, extending the left leg back. Keep that extension. And when you're breathing out, turn your nose together underneath the body. On the inhale, extending. Exhaling, curling. One more round. On the inhale, extend your body. And on the out as you're rolling in, placing your foot forward in between the hands or helping it there. Bring both hands to the inside of the front foot and swing the back knee behind your back. As we're inhaling, lifting through the left arm, uh, right arm. I'm sorry, fixing up sides. <laughs> your choice to place your left forearm on the thigh or pointing uh, the fingertips down towards the front toes. Stay reasonably high in this extension and then let your arms swing in front of you if you would like to take it further and reaching the arm potentially over the head. A light chin tuck. And the gaze might rise up towards the top half of fingertips, feeling a deeper extension through the side body. Keep your knee in guidance alongside with the toes. Inhale. And on the exhale, then releasing your right hand fingertips to the ground. Bring the right foot back into alignment and take an inhale to lift your left arm. So we're in a light twist. Gaze can open towards the side if this feels good. And let your arms swing down, hand comes to the side of the foot. We're tucking the toes under this time, lifting the knee off the floor, find length in your spine, step the foot to the short edge of the mat and fold forward. On the inhale, come to a half lift. On the exhale, bending again. Let's use our feet to rise up from, take an inhale, lifting the arms up. And when you're breathing out, let the arms release down by the sides, coming to stand in our first mountain pose. I believe there's no better position than the mountain really that can keep us in this moment. So I'm currently lifting my feet lightly lifting my toes like a mini step from one foot to the other, drawing all of the attention down into the foundation of the posture. Let the arms open out, palms face forward, and from grounded feet now that are active, there's strength coming up through the legs, a little strength through the torso, and then there's a lift of the crown of the head towards the ceiling. We will take an inhalation and stretch the arms up towards the sky, softening through the knees and on the out breaths, folding forward and down towards the mat. On the inhale, lengthening the spine again towards the front edge. And as you're breathing out, stepping your right foot back. Now lower the heel of the right foot down. Take your hands on the inside of the front foot. We're coming back into side angle pose. So with the next inhale now, lifting through the right arm. 
You can either keep the left arm on the inside of the knee or rest it down to the top of the thigh. Ground down actively through the outer edge of the right foot. If you want to extend this side angle, bring a bend into that back knee, swing your arm down as you inhale and straighten the leg on the out breath where the arm now reaches over the head. If you want to look up into the hand, have a light chin tuck. Feel into the length and the side body and notice the quality of your breath. Are you still able to breathe now evenly in and out? Inhaling here. As you exhale, place your right and fingertips down into the mat. Lift your right heel, right knee can come down for support. Otherwise, an inhale to lift the left arm. And here it's up to you to draw the left hip in line with the right while you're turning towards the side using the legs wisely. Let's swing the arm back down on the outside of the foot. Take the left foot, bring it into downward dog. If this is too strong for you today, please come down to your knees or four stands would be a good alternative. I've just softened my knees and tried stretching the tailbone further up while keeping space around my upper back. On the next inhalation now, let's roll this forward into a plank or its kneeling friend. And when you're exhaling, lowering down onto or towards the mat. On the inhale, come into a cool bra or an upward facing dog. And on the out breath, start your way back, either by a puppy pose or going straight back into downward facing dog. Feel free to move this down dog if you're in one or even just moving the hips if you've chosen a puppy pose. This is just there to stay in the moment. Full awareness of your body. And now with your next inhalation, the right leg is lifting. On the hour breath, take your knee towards the chest and aim with your foot between your hands. Lower the other foot down onto the mat. Take your hands in between your feet and start to turn your toes out towards the corners of the mat. When you're exhaling from there, start rolling up through your spine. Take an inhalation and reach the arms up again. So we've got a nice tall stance. Legs long, arms reaching up, maybe the gaze is up as well. Bring a bend into the knees just slightly and draw your hands down towards the heart, extending your spine halfway forward. This is where I would love you to stay. Please do not lock the legs and the toes can be faced outwards just for a nice long spine. As you're leaning forward, your lower belly is drawing back towards the tailbone to support the stance. With the next inhalation, the right arm reaches forward, the left arm along the side of the body. And with the out breath, the palms are touching again in front of the chest. Bend your knees more if you're rounding your back. On the inhale, left arm forward, right arm back. Exhaling, hands touching at the heart. Do that once more in each direction, inhaling, exhaling to touch the hands. One more, breathe in, extend forward and back. Exhale, bring the hands to the heart. Now turn your toes in or your heels out and release the hands down towards the floor. On the in-breath, stretch your spine forward one more time. And then as you exhale, come into standing forward bend. Let the crown of the head point towards the floor unless you struggle with club pressure in the head, then keep yourself halfway lifted. Your hands remain underneath the shoulders, wherever your shoulders are, and you're lifting the shoulders gently back up into their sockets. 
the weight sits forward in your feet and you're now focusing on the length of the hour breaths. Now, can you come back to the ratio of breathing? Maybe even using the Ujjayi breath again. As you're inhaling, and when you're exhaling, you're trying to double. Remember how we entered this way of breathing. It is the length of the exhalation that determines the length of the inhalation not the other way around, because that could lead to stress. I ask you to stay there for three more breaths. Once you have completed the breaths, come back up onto your fingertips. Turning your toes back to the front end of the mat, take hands to either side, lift your heels, step the foot forward, inhaling, half lift, exhaling, forward bend. Using the feet again as you come up into standing, and then in breath to reach the arms up. And as you exhale, let your arms release and arriving once more in a mountain form. You can do anything that feels right, lifting, wiggling over the feet. And maybe you're noticing that sometimes even the skin underneath the feet is kind of squashed to a sticky mat. So we find the spread of the skin down but we're lifting from the feet upwards, engaging our body right towards the crown of the head. From there, inhale again, lifting the arms up. On the exhale, soft knees and folding forward. On the inhale, a half lift. It is the left foot that steps back now, but grounding down to the heel of the foot. The hands move to the inside of the front foot. And we're using that front foot as we inhale in to open the body out into our side angle. Forearm can rest upon the thighs, but you could also point your fingertips down. If this feels sufficient, you can stay. Or you can bend the back knee as you raise it, swing your arm down in front of you, and then maybe extending the arm over the head. If you want to look up, put that light chin tuck. See where it takes you here as you ground actively through the outer edge of the left foot. Or as arch is active though, feeling the extension through the left hand side. On the next exhale, let your top hand release to the mat in line with the right foot. Lift to the left heel and breathe in to extend your right arm up. Be active in the right side of the pelvis as you draw the hip backwards, keeping the extension up. Maybe the guys lift it again. Then swing your arm down, place a hand to the outside of the foot. Step back, down facing dog. Inhale now, rolling the spine forward, coming into a plank or a kneeling plank. And when you're exhaling, lower all the way down onto the mat this time. Let your arms extend along the sides of the body. Chin your forehead is resting on the ground, so are the tops of your feet. If that is comfortable for you, interlace the hands behind the back and lengthen the arms down the spine. As you inhale, lifting your legs, head, chest, may the arms coming off the back and holding here. Few breaths. Lifting the head only as much as your chest is rising. So have it not hanging in the back of the neck. The neck remains. In line with the rest of the spine. Notice how the breast is suffering in back bends, accepting that that is the case. Take one more breath there, and then as you're exhaling, releasing the arms, releasing the body, place the hands down by the side. I suggest a puppy pose in between, as you might tuck your toes under when you lift and reach the hips up and back. 
Just checking in with your spine. If you're feeling happy, you can then lift the knees off the floor. But this is only an option, and you could stay on all fours as well. We'll lift our left leg next and so come into position to do so. And as you inhale, the left leg is lifting. On the out breath, bring your left knee to the chest and then landing the foot forward between the hands. Walking your hands into the middle of the feet. And again, please turn your toes into the corners of the mat, keeping the knees soft while you're rolling up on the out breaths. Lengthening the legs and reaching the arms up towards the ceiling. As you've got long legs, fingers reaching up, your gaze might reach up too. And then bring a bend into the knees, just a little one. Take the hands to the heart and come back into the half forward bend. Do the same here. Use your lower abs and draw them in the direction of the tailbone, becoming firmer around the our root chakra and our root block as well. Please choose if you like to move one arm forward, one arm back, or come with me for the inhalation, both arms reaching forward, and on the exhale, both arms reaching backwards. On the inhale, reaching forward, on the exhale, backwards. Go for two more, either one each side, or both arms forward, both arms back. When we've completed our two breaths, let both arms come back, rest behind the back. And as you interlace the hands there, changing the finger you have on top, turn your heels out, your big toes in, find length in your spine, and breathe out to fold. Arms may lift away from the back. Knees out of the lock. And weight sitting forward in the feet again. So the tailbone comes nice and high. And we're staying in this forward bend for a few breaths. Allowing yourselves deep in and out breaths. Lengthening the out breaths. Shortening the in breaths, whatever feels right for you to get this into balance without any strain or stress. Let your hands release towards the mat. Lift onto your fingertips for an inhale. Turn your toes to the front edge of the mat. Walk the hands to either side. Lift your back. Feel lengthen your spine as you breathe in. And then stepping forward, Uttanasana, breathing out. On the inhale, come to a half lift. On the exhale, fold it again. Then use your feet and rise as you inhale, lifting. And on the out breath, releasing the arms back alongside the body. So we're returning into mountain pose. There's never any need to rush to any of these places. So we're grounding once more through the feet, however your technique might look like. And it could be then that you're strengthening again from the soles of the feet up to the crown of the head. I would like to practice the tree sequence uh, this morning so that we can stay in this present moment, guided by our breath to be here and the arm movement. We'll start with the arm movement only. As we inhale, the arms are reaching out and up. On the exhale, take Anjali Mutra down in front of your chest. As you breathe in, turn your fingers to face forward. With the exhale, extend the arms to the front. With the inhale, open the palms up and circle the arms out to the sides. And when you're exhaling, releasing the arms down by the sides. Now we'll do that with a supported tree as you're lifting your right heel either on top of the foot or to the side of the ankle. Lifting from the hip into the tall stands of this tree. On the in-breath, reach the arms out and up. 
on the exhale, draw the hands to the chest. On the inhale, turn your fingers forward. On the exhale, extend the arms to the front. On the inhale, open the palms and arms out to the side. And as you release your arms, release the foot down. You will come straight to the other side. So now it's the left heel that lifts, reaching out through the standing leg up to the crown. And then inhale, lifting the arms, hands drawing down to the heart on the exhale. Inhaling, turning fingertips forward and breathing out to extend the arms. Opening the palms as you inhale, the arms reach out and we're landing down again on the elbow breath. And as you to pause just for now, turning the palms forward again, repeat for another round on each side. If you feel your balance is challenged, you leave the foot on the ground and just lift the heel. Otherwise, you might bring the foot up just below the knee against the inside of the leg, reaching out again from your standing leg to the crown of the head. And when you're ready, breathe in to lift your arms out. Exhale, hands touching down in front of the chest. Inhaling, point the fingers forward. Exhaling, extend the arms to the front. Inhaling, open the arms out. Landing as you release the arms down by the sides, turning the palms forward again, standing tall and considering what to do with the other leg. Once you've placed your foot, it will always be below the knee rather than touching, lengthen through the standing leg. Steady gaze as you inhale, lifting the arms up over the head. Exhaling, draw your hands down towards the heart. Inhaling, point your fingers forward. Exhaling, send the arms to the front. Inhaling, open the arms out. Landing the arms and the foot down onto the ground. Give the shoulders a little shrug. Close the eyes, standing in mountain pose and taking in this very moment. There could be a more grounding sensation. There could be a sensation of energy moving through the body or a sense of being completely connected, body, mind and breath. As you open the eyes gently, lowering your body down to sit, sending your legs out gently in front of you to begin with. And then we will bring our right leg in front, so bring the left leg in, then cross the right leg in front. Placing your hands down either side of you. We will take a breath in and lift the left arm up towards the ceiling. And on the out breath, then bending over to the right hand side. Softening through the arm. And you can lean as far in, but keep your sit bones on the ground. And then rolling the arm inwards. As you place the back of the hand against your knee, lift up through the crown of the head and slide your right hand fingertips behind you. So now you're sitting upright and tall. And the exhale, then use fingertips and back of the hand to go to a twist. Keep the shoulders down if you like. You can close the eyes, but stay here observing yourself. How does the twist feel? With your next inhale, bring your head to the front. With the exhale, swing the hand out behind your back. Lean towards the sit bones, lifting the crossed ankles off the floor. 
changing the cross of the ankles and pulling your feet back in towards you as you land them down, finding your easy pose again, fingertips down either side, just like you're repositioning the arms. And with the inhale from here, reach the right arm up. And with the elbows, bend in towards the side. You can go as far as you like. The body is nice and warm, but keep your sit bones on the ground rather than just leaning to the side, extending into the side. We roll our arm and shoulder in to place the back of this hand onto the outside of the knee. As we raise up through the crown of the head, the left hand fingertips are sliding behind her back. And then as you're exhaling, turning into a twist. You can close the eyes again if you like. Pausing here. Noticing sensations arising that through the spine. Or else, uh, maybe there's emotions that are stirred up in this place. As you inhale, we're turning the head towards the front. And with the exhale, releasing the form, let both hands, fingertips be behind. As you lean a little bit back, let your legs extend out towards the front. Turning your toes up towards the ceiling, and as you're exhaling, begin to round your back down to the mat. You can use your hands or not use them. That's up to you as we're rolling down onto the back. Let the arms flop out, your legs roll out. If this feels good, step the feet down onto the ground. Soles of the feet then come into touch and the knees are rolling out towards the sides for reclined bound angle pose or Suttabhata Komasana. Let the shoulders wiggle to the ground. You can draw your shoulder blades slightly under, broadening through the upper chest. And allowing yourself just a few breaths where the knee is becoming heavy. Of course, if there's any discomfort, you can lift the sole of the feet back onto the floor. If you are a fan of the full Shavasana, my suggestion is to slide one leg out after the other. And as the knees were open, the legs will naturally be drifting apart. The arms might already be in a good position. However, if this causes you stress in your lower back, or rather step your feet down to the edges of the mat, and let the knees fall in towards each other, closing the eyes as we arrive in our relaxation pose. Breath is flowing. Providing us maybe with the ability of being in this moment. As you acknowledge yourself, however you're showing up on this map, start to practice keeping the attention at the breath. Leaving the breath in its natural rhythm. Counting each breath as you inhale for one, exhale for one. Inhale for two, exhale for two. And keep that going, counting up to 10 without even thriving to count to 10. If you do reach the number 10, starting again. If 
gotten lost on the way of your count, start again as well. Now let go of the count of the breaths all together. Feel warmth spreading across your body as you melt further into relaxation. Changing your focus to the body. Taking a brief scan from head to toe, identifying parts, movements, or physical abilities that you can appreciate. You may even silently think every time something comes to mind. Appreciating the body or being in the present moment. Bring your attention back to the breath as the body hums with love and appreciation. Could now imagine yourself in relation to our entire planet. See yourself in your corner of the world. So small compared to everything and everyone on earth. And also recognize how significant you are as a part of this beautiful human race. Be in this presence of awareness. Maybe appreciating breathtaking places you have seen in this world or people you, who love you and who you love that are scattered in different countries or states. And then come into deep appreciation of the moment in time you are living in. You are connected to it all. You are a part of it all, the body, 
the local, the global, the universal, the deeply spiritual. Allowing yourself to gently deepen your breathing and returning some movement back into the body. Maybe a stretch. As you are at home, you could also just stay there. But if you would like to finish the practice with me, you might choose to bend your knees and roll onto your favorite side. You might stay there for a moment, the knees towards the chest in the fetal position. From there, coming back into sitting, and when you do come to sit, touch the hands together, thumbs lightly to the sternum, and Jali Mantra in front of the chest. Lifting the heart into the thumbs of your hands and lightly bowing the head towards the heart. Honoring this very moment in which we are connected to each other connected to the rest of existence, being grateful for this very moment. The deeper sense of gratitude, extending to each other. Namaste. Namaste.